In this video, we're going to talk about replacing the rack and pinion steering parts on this Troy built 30 inch rear engine lawnmower. It's a very easy job that you can do yourself at home and save yourself a little bit of money. I do want to make a couple of points first. I would stay away from those kits that you might find that are less than $20. I tried one of those kits and found that the tolerance between the two parts, the rack and the pinion, was too much. There was a mile of slop in the steering wheel and it was also subject to the pinion gear slipping even with a brand new part without even stripping it first. So keep that in mind. And also one of the things that can cause this issue in the first place is low or flat front tires. So you might want to check your tire pressure and make sure you're not running around with flat tires because that'll prematurely wear your lawnmower out. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so the first thing I would do here is remove the front wheels. Now you can probably get away with removing the tie rod connections without doing that, but to me it's just easier and it's easy to take the wheels off. It takes about a minute each, so it's not a problem. Just kind of gently pry this off of here, just like so, and remove the cotter pin. Then you can re-grease them when you put them back and make sure that the grease fitting and the wheel is doing its job. Now, if you've got a cotter pin that's kind of stubborn, a trick that I'll use sometimes is to grab that with some long nose pliers and the hook right there. This one will come right out, but if yours is stubborn, you can hit that like that and knock it out of there. And that's it. Comes right out. All right, next what you'll want to do is undo this cotter pin on the end of the tie rod right here. Now these tie rods do have a left and a right, and you don't want to mix those up. When I first got this lawnmower, the steering would lock up. Like if you were making a circle in the yard and you turned it all the way to the left or all the way to the right, you'd have to fidget with the steering wheel to get it to go straight again. And whoever worked on this before me had the tie rods backwards. I had to beat them out of there. So this is fitting very nice and, you know, loose, you know, like it's supposed to. So just undo the cotter pin. And notice this comes right out. If you're finding any value in this video, please subscribe to this channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. All right, now that we got our cotter pins out, let's just remove these tie rods. You'll have to pull the rack over or have somebody turn the steering wheel and just move it up like that. Remember, keep this one on this side of the tractor and the other one on its side. Slide this back over like so. Remove that one. All right, so next we'll need to remove this plate and all this stuff right here. There's three nuts. One, two, three. There's one over here you can't see. And those three have to be removed to get this rack out of here. Now here's the new rack. Normally what happens is, is these gears will wear down, these teeth rather, because it's just soft steel and it's not very high quality to be honest with you. And that's usually why you'll get that, the steering wheel will go click, 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 because it's slipping on these teeth. Now since we're gonna have the whole thing apart, we might as well replace the pinion gear as well. You might as well, it comes in the kit. All right, so I would take the middle one loose first. Now if you don't have an impact, you'll have to find a way to lock the steering wheel or get somebody to hold it or whatever. But I do have an impact. All right, so when you remove these two right here, the bolt head that feeds through from the top has got a smooth head with a square like a carriage bolt. You can easily push these bolts up into the frame and they make it hard to get to. Now you can easily remove the steering column and get to the top side of these bolts so that you don't have to risk losing them. You can actually do this without removing that steering column, but actually removing the steering column takes like a minute or two. It's very easy. All right, so that should come out. Pinion gear and all. If your pinion gear stays on here in the spline right there, just slides right off of there. And we'll pull out this bushing. We'll just go ahead and slide our new bushing right up in there. Very easy. 
All right, so I've already cleaned up the grease off of this old one, got all the grit and grime and dirt and all that good stuff out of there. Here's what the new kit comes with right here. Comes with a new rack, some grease, a pinion gear, new nuts, and some cotter pins. So very good. Let me see if I can show you what happens to the old gear. So if you notice these teeth right here, these are beginning to wear down right here. This one originally had that steering locking problem that I was describing earlier, so I figured, well, while I got it apart, I might as well replace this since it's kind of a common problem anyway. But yeah, right here, these are starting to wear down. Now this will get a lot worse where eventually that pinion gear will just spin, and then, well, when it does that, it's the end of it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of grease to this. You're probably thinking, well, won't that just get all full of grime again? Was well, that? yeah, it probably will. That's why I'm gonna kind of spread it out a little thin. All right, so I got kind of a thin coat on there. Let me just slide it through there. And then that is ready to go back together. And while we're here, I would just add a little bit to the pinion gear. And then that'll work itself through as you're turning the steering wheel. And then I'd go ahead and set the pinion gear right in there so it'll stay when you're trying to put it back up inside the mower. Just have to wiggle the pinion gear to get it on the spline. Just like so. And we'll put our tie rods back. Oh, by the way, here's what they look like. So you can see the difference there. One is bent one way, one is bent the other way. This one goes on the clutch side. This one goes on the non-clutch side, the right side as you're sitting in the seat. There we go. And we'll just grab this one and pull it over. And we'll put our clips in and do the same thing on the other side. All right, so we'll go ahead and just put the wheels back on and we're going to give it a test. Runs like a champ. Everything works great. Thanks for watching.